2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Four yep. years running. Stephen Moore from the Wall Street Journal. Thank you, Stephen. All right, we've got a couple of different uh, pieces of breaking news going on here. We're going to show you this one first. This, we understand, is a car chase, folks. It is a summer morning in Los Angeles, and you got a car chase underway. Uh, white truck seems to be heading off of the main road a bit right now. We're going to keep an eye on this situation. We're not sure where the police are uh, on the trail of this guy, but we will uh, continue to let you know when we get any more information on what he or she just, may be running away from. Daybreak right now. Yep. Just a little before 7 yeah, o'clock in the morning. Just 7, exactly. Oftentimes, we see the freeway so jammed with traffic. This is not a freeway, and it looks like an open road so far. Um, we watched one of these last week, Martha, and, and it, oh, it went on and oh, on, and the guy was pulling U turns yeah, right, left, incredible. and center, jumped the sidewalk, yep. rode down the sidewalk for about a half a mile. Uh, there, there are buildings and there are homes and there are mm -hmm. driveways. He, he could have hit or killed anyone yeah, at any it. moment. I mean, fortunately, in the end, he hit no one, injured no one, and they eventually got their guy, as we like to say. So often they do in the end. Uh, pausing helicopter for a moment now. there. Not sure if he's at a red light and decided to uh, observe that or whether he has decided uh, that he wants to stop running. We also haven't seen how far the police are behind him. Usually you start to get some sense when you get the wider shot of uh, who is in pursuit of this car. Uh, but they have apparently listened to some of this on the local uh, chopper coverage and uh, they are wanting this person to pull over. Uh, often what we see in these is sort of dipping on and off of the freeways all around. They seem to, ooh, Whoa, that that's close. So was, was that a one. very and a close third call. One. Now, oftentimes wow. they know the neighborhood because exactly. they, they live there. Uh, there's no telling whether or not this guy lives there, but that's an open bed truck. It was hard for Can me to imagine? see whether or not there was anyone inside the truck. These folks it are didn't on their way to like work, it. and they've got this white truck uh, uh, heading down the, the middle of the, uh, the yellow line down the road there and almost almost hit about three or four cars in that last little uh, move that they pulled off. So hopefully the police will be able to get this person under control before anybody gets hurt. But yeah. uh, clearly, uh, we, we don't have a handle yet on who's in the car, what they might have done. Uh, sometimes you we start to get a little bit more information on what they were running from or whether this was a robbery or a stolen car or now he's in a little bit of a tight spot mm -hmm. up and over uh, white, into the parking lot. It's a lot. white Mazda pickup truck started in San Dimas, California. It's unclear where he is right now. The, the screen says Los Angeles, but frankly, I'm not sure what neighborhood or what area of L.A. that mm -hmm. is uh, or how far this has gone or when it started. Uh, the LAPD, they are they are trained as well as any police force in the country or the world for that matter on stopping these events and bringing them to a resolution before anyone gets hurt uh, we haven't seen a police car right now in yeah. view of this uh, but uh, rest assured they're trailing him not yeah, too we're far behind about to get uh, some sound from the chopper which always gives us a lot more information uh, at one point right, on the freeway, it started on the 210, it went from the 210 to the 605 and on to the 60 and again as we just noticed we just passed uh, the Peck Road and went under that uh, 605. He's going into South Mounty now. Now, as we uh, have been reporting, this is a robbery suspect. We have uh, reports that he may have robbed a firing range, and of course, that's very uh, that that raises the whole situation even further for those officers who are chasing this man. Uh, he may have weapons, and at one point, we as we were listening to the traffic. Uh, we heard that uh, he may have fired at the deputies, either the passenger, because there are two people inside this white Mazda pickup truck, that he may have been firing at the deputies who were right behind him. And again, look at him here. He's trying to squeeze in. He may be uh, bumping that car, but he's been driving erratically throughout and uh, just trying to get away. At one point, I believe he may have felt like he got away because he didn't see any of the officers behind him. He parked. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's on a mission to uh, get away and not get caught. But again, there are so many helicopters above him. There's no way uh, he's going to get caught. And now the officers are right behind him now, as you can see. So the chase is on again. Yeah, that was and look fact. at the speeds. He's picking up speed again. And as we've been reporting, this is a robbery suspect and obviously more uh, intensified because the officers, the deputies believe that they may be armed and dangerous.
We're trying to determine what street we're on. It's, it's possible he is still on Peck Road. He got off the 60 freeway, and, and that's at the point where he lost some of the deputies that were right behind him. But he is moving on this street. You can see this. He got off the freeway. Now he's on surface streets. He's been driving erratically, at one point almost hitting those uh, cars that were waiting for the light to turn. And again, this is a man and a passenger. Obviously, do not want to uh, get caught and uh, be taken away by these officers. Robbery suspect may have robbed a firing range, may be armed and very dangerous. Whoa, look at that intersection. She described three or four different freeways. Yes, no, two people three in this vehicle. We saw both uh, the passenger and the driver. At one point, uh, Tony, he pulled off the freeway and parked. He was parking, trying to hide from the officers, but when he realized all of the choppers were above him, uh, that's when he picked up again and uh, started uh, driving off. And for some time, officers weren't behind him, but again, you can see the officers are now on his tail and they're behind him and they're back onto the freeway. He's eastbound 10 freeway now. What she described there is, is awesome. Oh, look dangerous. at that, almost hitting that car. Again, this guy is just very dangerous, has no care whatsoever for any of the other drivers. A very dangerous situation. Again, this is a robbery suspect that police are chasing. This is on the eastbound 10 right now. He is really picking up speed. This is a man who may have robbed a firing range. There's a passenger in there, may have weapons. And at one point, we received unconfirmed reports that they may have been firing at the deputies when this first, when the chase first ensued. So uh, again, a, a very cautious situation for those officers who are right behind him. Could be armed and dangerous, robbing a firing range nearby. It's 7 o'clock in the morning in L.A., and we just got on the story about seven minutes ago, and it, no telling how this will end up. Uh, apparently, this started in San Dimas, California. No, no, not at all. It's been going on for some time. Let's she see. described at least four different routes and freeways uh, where, the, uh, where the chase has now yeah. unfolded. Yes, he did. He crossed the, the 605, east, uh, so he's 10. still going eastbound. This guy on has the already 10. taken a, a number of huge risks. Well, he went flying through an intersection just moments ago, and, and the report from the... So fast. Uh, we don't see the cops behind him. They may have pulled. He's going over 90 miles an hour right now, so he is... The other driver, as you saw, he was crossing some of the intersections as well. He was like motioning to drivers to move out of the way. I got to go. And at one point, he even bumped uh, or almost bumped one of the vehicles. But again, he's really picking up speed, going about 90 miles an hour again. And he's going eastbound on the 10 freeway. To recap, this started a good 40 minutes or so. Uh, uh, some time ago, and it started on the 10, 210 freeway. It moved on to the 605, to the 60. He got off the 60, and at that point, that's when he lost some of the officers who were right behind him. He parked at, uh, we're not exactly sure, but he pulled over and parked somewhere, squeezed in between some cars, and he thought he had gotten away, but then looked above and saw several of the helicopters, and that's when he got up again and started moving. For the deputies that were right behind him again but we're on the 10 uh, the 10 freeway going eastbound now and see any officers behind him to Vinny look officers may they may, have, they may have pulled off but again this is the situation this is a robbery suspect the reports are that he may have robbed a firing range these guys may have weapons in this vehicle and one of the unconfirmed reports uh, Tony and Gene is that uh, they were firing at the deputies as uh, they were being chased when the, the speed, the high speed pursuit ensued. All right, what's your... Yeah, what, what you're watching here uh, is a 
police chases started around 6, 10 a.m. in L.A. Uh, let's bring in Trace Gallagher, who's been watching this situation as well. The, the early word here, Trace, is that this, they are suspects in the robbery of a firing range and that they may be, uh, you know, seriously armed with weapons and that they also may have fired. You just heard that chopper reporter saying they right. may have fired at the right. deputies when all of this got started. Uh, can you give us a better handle, Trace, on where, the, where this is? Sure, yeah, just to give some context to our viewers, Martha, this is Interstate 10 heading east, which if you don't know Southern California, he's heading, uh, leaving downtown Los Angeles, making his way out toward Riverside County. Beyond that, he would go out toward Palm Springs if it continued going out toward the Arizona border. Right now, he appears to be between uh, halfway between downtown Los Angeles and Riverside County, moving at speeds upwards of 90 miles per hour. Uh, the report that we just got is these guys do have apparently some high-powered weapons on on board that. And remember, if you put yourself in the mindset of the California Highway Patrol, they deal with all of these car chases in very specific ways. And the first parameter is they, they look at how dangerous the driver is and what risk he is posing to other vehicles. Clearly, if this guy's got high-powered rifles, if there are two passengers and one of them is able to shoot at either officers or or, and now we're being told, by the way, it's a man and a woman. We don't know if the man is driving, but a man and a woman are on this. So they're going to look at how much risk these people are posing to the cars around them, and that will give them an idea or give them some guidance on how aggressively they'll pursue these. The state agencies handle these a lot more aggressively than the local agencies, and it's our understanding the Highway Patrol is on this, at least for the time being, and they would have jurisdiction. So this seems to be one of those cases where they would want to put this thing at an end as quickly as possible, Martha. Mm. Yeah, that, uh, so now the information coming through, thank you, Trace, that uh, there's a man and a woman apparently driving this uh, Mazda pickup truck. Police believe that they robbed uh, a firing, some kind of firing uh, squad, firing institution, may have guns, lots of them in the car perhaps, and that they may have been firing at the deputies uh, when all this started. There's a local reporter saying now that uh, they may have squeezed off a few rounds uh, directed toward a, uh, what's happening here? Uh, directed toward a deputy. Don't know when that would have happened, either during this chase or right when the chase began. You see they lost um, a tire? Yeah, see yeah. that, Trace. We sure do. Lost a tire, maybe low on gasoline, perhaps a combination of both. But uh, and now we see in the eastbound lane of Interstate 10, this Mazda white pickup truck pulling over to the side for what purpose is not clear. But uh, very soon you'll see at least a half dozen police cars trailing mm -hmm. this pickup truck. And we may see one of these rear movements where they go up and bump the back quarter panel and try and get that car to spin out and uh, bring it to a halt. Uh, the television reporter in that helicopter was excellent. And she described the possibility that they had robbed a firing range. Mm. And if that's the case, armed and dangerous can yeah, be underscored. See, the police cars uh, now have sprung their doors open. They will use those doors as barricades as they try to deal with these people. Uh, often when the car slows down, you start to see somebody hop out and try to run. We did not see that in this case. And boy, look at the... Uh mass of police that is now behind this car you you know firing at deputies uh mm -hmm. will uh, make It'll a situation get you, get you incredibly right? intense yeah. very quickly and now the, the long shadows of the morning sunrise now across that that california desert and the pavement of that los angeles freeway Look at this. started in san dimas california you know that that's east of la uh went further east and uh this car is surrounded now yeah. you have to ask yourself How's it going to uh, end? Yeah. And it looked like it was stopping, but now it's kind of limping along and trying to, you know, pick up a little bit of momentum. You have to wonder if uh, we didn't see it hit, you know, may have hit spike strips along the way. We don't know if a tire blew out, if the gas is running out. Uh, but it makes you wonder what's going through this person's mind now. As we always see in these cases, 99% uh, of the time, you know, folks, they don't want to give up. They just want to yeah. keep it, dragging it out as long as possible because they know that there is no possible good outcome in this situation. Once you start to evade the police, you're going to end up in jail. I mean, yeah. I've never Here seen comes. it end any other way. Here uh, comes the, the, the rubber off that left rear yeah. tire. Donald Fair works with us, too, in L.A., where Trace is out of our LA, L.A. bureau. He reports that, um, that at least the driver was shouting something at uh, mm -hmm. some of the other vehicles as they were passing them at speeds in excess of 100 miles an hour. Now we come to a halt, at least for now. This might be a temporary stop. It may not be. 
Uh, these police officers oftentimes they'll they'll use the the car door mm -hmm. uh, to give them uh, a bit of a shield and some defense in the event that they need it. And if they're armed and dangerous, this would be one Look of those the cases. Cars on the other side of the road, all slowing down. Uh, imagine this is your site on the way to work. They are just probably at least 10 to 15 police cars behind this one, and everybody on the other side of the highway doing a little rubbernecking, curious about what is about to unfold here. So there's one person out. Mm -hmm. We were told there's a man and a woman. Let's see if that's the case. Uh, this person now being uh, given instructions by the officers mm -hmm. there, told to back up, hands above your head, don't make any sudden movements. And then at some point very soon you'll see the request to get on your, on your belly side and get all fours spread out. And that's when the officers will likely move in and handcuff this gentleman and take him away. Uh, if there is a woman or an accomplice with him, we have not seen that other person. Where are you going now? This is where it gets so dangerous, too. Look at Some this. Some of these officers. Unbelievable. Yeah, Look at that. Yeah, punked for the moment, but oh this car won't God. go far. Left rear tires blown out. Might have some issues with the gasoline level. Now the officers make another move. Trace, you can see this too, right? Yeah, I see it, Bill. You know, you were talking about the pit maneuver earlier where they were trying, if he goes again, try and stop him. And, and anytime there are weapons on board, they, they really will not use that maneuver. So what they're doing now is, is they just want to stand back and wait and see what this guy does. If they think there are weapons on board, they clearly will keep all their officers behind. They're going to have them get out of the car one after the other, not at the same time, because they want to be able to watch them both. So it's one and then the other. This guy clearly is playing games with them. He's getting out, and then he's doing whatever he wants to do and gets back in. They will probably ask for the woman to get out next, so they are both clear of the car before they actually move in and stop this, just to make sure that she doesn't have some type of weaponry aimed at the police officers before they do any movements toward this guy who is now laying on the ground. Uh, look, it appears to be over, but we thought that 38 seconds ago, and this guy got up, got back in the car. Trace, so is that knows? passenger door moving now? It, it, it looked like it It looks like be. it is open. Yeah, it looks like it is open, and that's the way they'll do it, Bill. One at a time, they'll bring her out, and then once she's out and then she's on the ground, that's when you'll see the officers get around from behind those doors and go over there and actually uh, put the handcuffs on. Uh, they make sure they're, that neither one of them are armed and make sure they're both clear of that vehicle before they move, and it stands yeah. to reason. This car is not going anywhere, and the would, last would, thing you want to these, do is to provoke somebody. Are these deputies from L.A. County or Orange County, a combination of both? What is it, Trace? Probably a combination. You can see those are deputies, Bill. You can see the, the brown and green outfits. Those are uh, Los Angeles County deputies. You see there they have now approached on this woman. They've got guns trained on the other one. She apparently has has exited or is about to exit that side of the of the thing. But we think both agencies were involved in this, L.A. County Sheriff's as well as the California Highway Patrol. And it stands to reason because it's outside the city of L.A. It's in the county of Los Angeles. Therefore, it's the jurisdiction of both L.A. County Sheriff's as well as the California Highway Patrol. I thought that was a man. Didn't you, Martha? Yes. If that's the case, we're waiting on a woman, according to reports. Yeah, there she is. Hands up, walking backwards toward the officers. Trace, I don't know if you got a read on the local report that they may have tried or been successful at robbing a local firing range. And yeah, a firing range, and they got some of those guns. Yeah, exactly. Confiscated some guns. And the early reports were they actually fired on some of the deputies in the early going of this car chase. Remember, California is a three-strike state bill, and the reason that people go and go and go is because if you've been convicted of two other crimes, this is a violent crime. An armed robbery means you are going away and going away forever, which is why people run so far and will not give up, because if this is a third striker, that's it. They're gone. Yeah, that's it. You know, we'll often see them dragging these things out, driving around neighborhoods, uh, making phone calls, talking to people, because as you accurately point out, Trace, uh, they know this is the end of the line, and clearly this is the end of the line for these two. Uh, you wonder what they were up to, what their plan was today when they woke up early this morning or stayed up late last night uh, and tried to uh, knock over this uh, this firing, uh, this firing arms place in 
take as much as they could perhaps and, and put it in this truck and, and take off. But it, it has been an unbelievable scene. And, you know, it, the drama that plays out in these moments to, to decide to be standing there with all these police at your back and decide that you're going to get back in the car and drive a little bit mm -hmm. further. Uh, you just ha you have to wonder what's and going the, through the The officers time. we talk to have gone through these experiences. Yeah. They, they always talk about the adrenaline rush uh, that, that they get trying to um, bring it to a peaceful resolution mm -hmm. and make sure nobody gets hurt, injured or, or, or killed. Uh, and certainly the innocents who are up and down these freeways and through these neighborhoods that we've watched now for years uh, with these scenes in Southern California, sometimes Central Texas. Uh, in this case, it was Southern California. It's wrapped up, mm -hmm. thankfully. Looks like everybody's okay. These guys okay. are extremely good at what they do. Yes, they this, are. Th this is the way this usually ends, uh -huh. fortunately. Bravo on a Monday yep. morning, 60, oh, 59 minutes. Now resolved. We yep. go along. And back to one of the top stories of today.